Welcome back to 110 Daily on the 110 Sports Network. Josh Dorian, and Chris Brown both here with me. The final five. The second hour every Friday, picking five games from the weekend uh, that we're going to pick winners for. Um, and we'll keep track of who's the smartest or I guess the luckiest, depending on which way you want to look at it. But we've got five games this week and got five pretty good games, two uh, really good games, uh, co- two college basketball, a college football and two NFL games. Gentlemen, shall we begin? Let's do it. We'll start yeah. with the great with with the best game of the weekend, in my opinion, yeah. um, at least the most exciting game of the weekend one versus two in the college basketball world gonzaga versus baylor not only are these one and two in the polls these are clearly the two best teams in college basketball right now they square off on sunday um i'm now realizing that i should have had when they're playing because that would have been a nice piece of information to add saturday isn't it that what did i say sunday i meant saturday that's a, uh, at noon uh, at one Eastern on CBS Gonzaga versus Baylor in Indianapolis. Mr. Brown, we'll start with you. Your winner yeah. for for this Gonzaga Baylor game. Yeah, I'm going Gonzaga. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. I mean, this is you're right. This is the game of the weekend. Um, undoubtedly, these are the clear number one and two teams in the sport right now. I think pretty undoubtedly um, and and it's going to be really good as far as revealing where these two teams are at and really, really honing in on what their biggest, you know, weaknesses, areas for they need to improve moving forward are going to be. It's going to be great, a great learning experience for both programs, I'm sure. Uh, and Baylor's right there, obviously, you know, it's number one and number number two. I mean, I, I you know, it's it's not like it would be an ups- a huge, you know, crazy thing if Baylor won. Uh, but as I know you guys have talked about, as we've talked about earlier this week on the show, uh, the one thing that Baylor is missing is that elite interior presence. And I, of course, Gonzaga had more problems on Wednesday than Baylor in their most recent game. But a lot of that can be, I think, attributed to the, the Jalen Suggs injury. And then, of course, they got back that efficiency when he came back in the second half. Uh, so I'm going Gonzaga. Um, I just think that they're just, frankly, just the they've got that extra piece than the more a sturdy interior presence that has them uh, gives them the advantage over a uh, Baylor. Of course, it's it's razor thin margins though. I'm going with Gonzaga as well. The reason being Drew Timmy, as that, you alluded to, Chris. That's about right. <laughs> these backcourts are so close. I like Baylor's a little bit better, especially when we're not sure what Jalen Suggs is going to look like. But that slight edge I'm willing to give to Baylor's backcourt does not make up for Corey Kispert and Drew Timmy. Mm-hmm. That's where Gonzaga has the edge. I'm I'm very much in the camp. This is the best team in the country until somebody does something drastic to change my mind, regardless of how many losses they have in this brutal non-conference schedule they're playing, regardless of how they look in this game. As long as Jalen Suggs is Jalen Suggs, which he was not in when he came back, against West Virginia, but mm-hmm. maybe with a couple of days rest, he's he's fine or he's going to get back to that point. Somebody's going to have to do something to change my mind. So I'm just going to pick Gonzaga in every game they play. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've got Gonzaga as well. Very simply, Drew Timmy will be the difference. That'll, mm-hmm. that'll be it. And I think we'll – we're going to figure out how close these teams are, though, and going to understand really how big of a hole – there is in that Baylor interior how good that Baylor front court can be against a guy like Drew Timmy. They could be completely exposed, um, and even if, or they could not be exposed and and still lose this game. I still think Gonzaga is the better basketball team. I think they're deeper. I think they're more well rounded. Even if Baylor uh, might have the slightly better backcourt, like Josh said, the margin there between the backcourts isn't enough to for Baylor at least on paper to overcome uh the rest of what Gonzaga's got because there's not an argument we haven't even gotten to Gonzaga's two best players when we're talking about the backcourt right we still got Kispert to talk about we still got Timmy to talk about those three players in Baylor's backcourt Butler uh Macy Oteague and Davion Mitchell those are 
if not three, uh, all three of their best players, three of their four best players, and um, that will ultimately be the difference. So we agree there. Let's go to a game that is much closer than I thought it would be uh, when the season started. Texas Villanova at Texas. Josh, what do you got? I'm going Villanova. I think Jeremiah Robinson Earl is going to bounce back and be the guy who was so good at the beginning of this season and give Jericho Sims problems. And I was really going back and forth because I like this Texas team and I'm concerned by what I've seen from Villanova so far. But ultimately, I'm going with Jay Wright and the Wildcats because they're just a more mature team than North Carolina is at this moment in time. For, for all the mistakes and the miscues they've had so far, I trust them to be able to figure it out. And Texas was not able to put North Carolina away and stay on top of that game. They really were faltering the second half, needed Matt Coleman to make a big play, which he's more than capable of doing. But they were not exactly convincing. And I said on our podcast, I think they were probably the most impressive team in Maui, but they had good moments and not so good moments. I'm still waiting to see what they can be. Would not be surprised if they win this one, but I'm going with Villanova until there's a major red flag for me to start really getting concerned about them. Sure. Chris? Yeah, I'm going with Villanova too. Um, So I don't know. We may not have very much disagreement in this segment. I don't know. Um, But this was a lot closer than I expected when I started researching how, you know, I started looking more into what Texas had done in their early games. I'm starting to really get on board with this team. Um, I feel like this is one of the best backcourts in the country, honestly, with, with Matt Coleman and Greg Brown. And I'm, I'm really starting to get, I'm really starting to get more and more optimistic about this Texas team, but I'm kind of going to just echo what Josh said in that I had it written down here, Villanova colon more mature team. I just don't, I haven't seen enough bad from them where I'm going to, they're a team that's, that's sort of given me this idea. Like they're at a level for me where I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt where I'm not going to like knock them down in my own head in terms of my rankings until I see more problems from them, more, more trouble signs. Uh, so I'm still going to go with Villanova and the experience that they have, but it's really close and I could absolutely see this going the other way. And you're talking about Caleb Love, the freshman versus Colin Gillespie, the point guard position that matters to me. I'm going with Texas. Oh, all, right. all right. I like it. I like the difference. Texas has fans and Texas has the personnel to attack all of the things that I'm concerned with with Villanova right now. I think Jericho Sims and Greg Brown will be good enough uh, comparative to Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Um, I I don't have faith in that Villanova backcourt on defense yet. Virginia Tech was able to get to the rim. Boston College was able to get to the rim. And neither of those teams have guards that are as gifted offensively as Courtney Ramey and Matt Coleman. It's at home. It's in Texas, so there will be some fans at the game. I think that matters as well. Um, I, I, I'm i nervous about Nova's defense, and I'm specifically nervous about Nova's defense in the places that I feel good about Texas's offense. Texas has been good on defense so far, um, so I'll go with the Longhorns. It's very, very close. I won't be surprised if Villanova goes in and takes care of business like the mature team led by Jay Wright that they are. Um, but I think I, I'm going to give the edge to Texas, um, on a neutral court. I would probably go Villanova by two or three, to be honest with you. I'll go by Texas sure. with Texas by two or three when it's, when it's, uh, in Austin. I yeah, like the disagreement here. I like the disagreement. Yeah, I like, like we get some disagreement. Yeah. So so let's go to the college football world. And who would have thought that the best college football game of the weekend would be between Coastal Carolina and BYU? Josh, let's start with you. I got BYU. I've been more convinced by them this season than Coastal Carolina. They played a better schedule, even though it's not great. And I also feel like they have a chip on their shoulder and they have something to prove that Coastal Carolina doesn't. Now, obviously, you're going for the undefeated season. I get that. Mm -hmm. And we've never seen a matchup of non-Power 5 teams that are still undefeated this late in the season. But BYU is not comparing themselves to Coastal Carolina. They're comparing themselves to Cincinnati. 
and they just have not gotten respect from the committee mm-hmm. in terms of trying to be a factor in this playoff discussion. Cincinnati's resume is much better. That's the reason why I don't have a real issue with it. But I think that that's something that Coastal Carolina is just not getting into the playoff. Their mm-hmm. schedule is not good enough. Where BYU right. has an argument to feel like they should be a larger part of that conversation, even though they're still significantly behind Cincinnati. And then, of course, the four teams that are sitting there right now. But I just feel like they have an extra something to prove that they're not looking at this as a as just a, an opportunity to beat a good team. It's the one chance they have to prove that they belong in that discussion. Yeah, I think <laughs> – it's interesting. Coastal doesn't have nearly the resume, but going to Coastal and beating Coastal would actually would definitely be a a boost on the resume, which is not something you could typically oh, yeah. say. Um, Chris, what about you? Yeah, I'm actually going Coastal Carolina. Have some disagreement here. I, okay. I wrestled with this one, and I was a little bit surprised when you guys said this is the idea that you had to as as one of our games to talk about. I was like, this is the biggest game to talk about in college football this weekend. And I looked, and I was like, okay. Yeah, this one's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm, I am going with Coastal Carolina. And for me, I mean, I kept going back and forth looking at the strengths of both these teams. For me, I, I would point out that BYU also really only has one good win, yep. and that's Boise State, uh, which was dealing with COVID issues at the time. This is going to be BYU's first FBS opponent since that game on November 6th. They're also traveling 2,000-plus miles on short notice for this game. And so honestly – that's kind of the X factor for me. Uh, the fact that uh, Coastal Carolina is is on their home turf, that they have this advantage where they were, you know, BYU is sort of being thrown into this really quickly, and it's more of an adjustment for them. Uh, and I just really like what I have seen from Coastal Carolina. They have that big road win uh, over Kansas, a Big 12 team. Uh, they won at Louisiana. I know that Kansas calling Kansas, I, yeah. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I know that's a stretch. I understand. Hey, they are better than most of the teams. Say. They are most better than most of the teams by BYU's points. There's no dispute right. on that. Right. Like I wouldn't I know it's weird to say like, oh, there's your power there's your power conference win. I know that's a little weird, but still, like they have the Kansas, they have the Louisiana, they have a quarterback, a freshman quarterback, Grayson McCall, having a really special season. So with that and just given where this game is and sort of the adjustment that BYU has to make, uh, I'm going with Coastal Carolina. But again, I think it's close. You know, it's funny. I'm going with BYU because of the because of the um, immediate, I'm I'm losing my I forgot how to say words there for a second. I apologize. Um, asking a team to prepare for Zach Wilson in three days is a really really tall task. I know that that BYU is the team that has to fly the twenty two hundred miles or whatever it is, and I know Coastal is undefeated. I know Coastal is. Is, is that team this year that everyone is paying attention to for the first time ever. Zach Wilson's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. He's dangerous, and it takes a lot longer than three days to prepare for Zach Wilson. I think that'll be the difference. I think BYU's a better football team in general, but that, that changes things a little bit for me there is that it's, it's hard to prepare for Zach Wilson no matter how much time you have to prepare for Zach Wilson when you're told – you know, 96 hours before the game that you got to figure out how to stop that BYU offense and one of the best quarterbacks in the country. I'll give the edge to the team that's got the best, that's got the best player on the field and one of the best offensive players in the country this season. So I'm going with BYU. Coastal's got the magic this year. It just seems like it. Um, So getting a win like this would be fitting, but with Zach Wilson at quarterback, I'll, I give BYU the slight edge on the road. Let's go. All right, this is my chance then. This is my chance, my opportunity to pick up a point on you guys if this works out. Well, it's okay. At this point, I'm three and zero, and you guys are, and 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 Chris, you're one and two. You're really struggling over there, picking Villanova and <laughs> Coastal. Wow. Um. Okay, let's go to the NFL real quick. Uh, Cardinals Rams, big football game. Um. You know, two respectable football teams but also in an nfc west that just has a bunch of teams that refuse to win games that they're supposed to win at the rams losing to the niners at home i'm not salty about it at all um chris who do you have one in this game yeah i have the rams winning this game it's a tough call because my first thought for both of these teams is the concerns that i have with them right now for the cardinals it's an offense that slowed down a bit 
They say Kyler Murray's shoulder is not an issue. I'm not really buying that. Um, it just based on how he looked last weekend and how that offense looked last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rams are, you know, looked sloppy offensively in their loss to the 49ers last weekend. Jared Goff, we talked about him. It's very, it's he's very much fall, had been falling apart at the first sign of pressure. So that's the concern for them. But the X factor for me, the Rams defense. They just show up week after week. I think uh, that with uh, with Murray not looking 100%, I think they're going to do enough defensively to escape with a win here, even though Jared Goff has been very much not a steady presence. It comes down to the Rams defense for me. Josh? I got the Cardinals. Home. Better quarterback, even if he is banged up. Home is the bit of a stretch, though. They're not actually at home. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just going to trust Kyler Murray and this, what Cliff Kingsbury is doing. They honestly need this game more, I would argue, with where the things are in the standings. And I, I just trust them to deliver. This is a, this is very much a toss up, but I, I'm going the Cardinals. I'm going to be different. Well, you're not going to be different for very long because I'm going oh. with the Cardinals as well. Um, All right. Here's, here's what I got to say. The Rams had four turn. The, the Rams made the 49ers turn over the ball four times. And they still managed to lose to a team led by Nick Mullins. So, so yes, the defense shows up every week. They showed up in a big way last week. But Jared Goff went and turned the ball over. Excuse me. They forced three turnovers. But Jared Goff turns the ball over four times. They need... A, a burst of energy and two scores really quickly just to get into the game at the end and then can't stop Nick Mullins in crunch time and he just basically walks down the field to a field goal. Nick Mullins is not a good quarterback. Nick Mullins having to throw the ball should be a good thing for your defense and the Rams couldn't the, the Rams defense didn't get it done at the very end of that game to stop them from going down and scoring a field goal. Um, Kyler Murray regardless of how banged up he is if he's on the field, he's better than Nick Mullins. And so I am I'm gonna side with the Cardinals team that has also lost two straight. That is, you know, both of these teams are angry and upset because they've lost games that they shouldn't lose. Um, but I'll go with the Cardinals. I just I like Kyler Murray, I like DeAndre Hopkins, and I watched that a lot of that Rams game and there's not a whole lot to be excited about on that offense, and they still managed to lose that game despite uh, what the defense did to keep them in that game uh, for as long as they did. So I'm going with yeah. the Cardinals as well. Yeah, that's certainly valid concerns with the Rams. And I should clarify something I said a minute ago when I said not exactly a home game for the Cardinals. I was getting my teams mixed up, and I was thinking of the 49ers playing in Arizona. So just to clarify, yes. right? it is a yeah. home game for the Cardinals. Uh, yeah, they, they are. Yeah, they are. Yes, home. that is a real indeed home oh, game for them. Yes. Yes. All right. Finally, Browns, Titans. Josh, what do you got? Give me the Browns. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. This team right. is just not getting any respect, I feel like. I'll give you one reason why they're going to lose here in a minute once you're done telling me why they're going to win. <laughs> so the reason they're going to win is I don't trust the Titans coming off of this big win against the Colts. That defense has not been what I wanted it to be this season. This is going to be a close game because the Browns are not going to go put up 40 points. They're not going to blow them out. But I, I'm riding with the Browns. I'm going to fight for their respect. And I I just don't feel great about the Titans, and I specifically don't feel great about the Titans' ability to put together quality win after quality win in a short period of time. They let James Robinson run all over them last yep. week. Yep, that's my that's the point I have right here. There are two running backs that have been better this year so far, at least in the rushing yards department, than James Robinson. Dalvin Cook, and say it with me, Derrick Henry. Henry. <laughs> if they're gonna let James Robinson run all over them, what makes they th makes you think that they're not gonna let Derrick Henry run all over them? And the Titans have a, a competent quarterback. The Jaguars don't. Like you could put eleven people in the box to stop James Robinson and you like, there's a, a relatively okay chance that you'd be okay taking a, 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 your chances with whoever it was that was playing quarterback for Jacksonville last week. I I know that the 
Titans defense is not good. The Browns have a lot of weapons. The Titans have Derrick Henry. That's why they're going to win the football game. Yeah, I, I'm with. I, I also pick Titans here. I trust Derrick Henry and Ryan Tannehill more at home, uh, given all the other factors involved. And that was the other point, the big point I had that Josh just made that the Browns and defense home. allowed James Robinson to put up 130 yards against them last week. I think I think you made, you made my point. I think I'm completely with you on that, Josh. I just I look. I mean, they gave they. I think Derrick Henry's going to run all over them. I have more confidence in Ryan Tannehill. I feel like for the Browns to win, Baker Mayfield needs to be at his absolute best. Like that's the only like I feel like there's only that's the only way they're winning this game is if he's firing on all cylinders, and I just don't have that kind of confidence in him. It'll be close. <laughs> that is the thing we can all agree but on. When was the last time yes. that? When was the last time that? like it was that the Browns and Titans were playing a game that was one of the best football games of the weekend. I mean, maybe never That's strange. World. Maybe never. That's I mean, the strange. Browns have been yeah. bad forever, so probably never. Yeah. That, that you checks were at least, out. Right, you were at least talking about a Browns Oilers game. Right. Right. I think that has to be right. Cause I mean, the Browns, this whole winning multiple games in a season thing is, is uh, still uncharted territory for current Browns fans. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm gonna apologize to Browns fans. I'm sorry, that was unnecessary, uh, but not incorrect. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll do what are you watching most, uh, best game, most interesting game of the weekend. We'll do that next. One Ten Daily on the One Ten Sports Network.